Hi, welcome to Crafted Sweetly. Thanks so much for being here. I'm Diana. In this video, I wanted to show you something a little different. So you may have seen one of the newest um, book art, really not folding so much because it doesn't involve folding per se for the book itself, but um, it's this. But in this video, I want to show you something a little different. I've done previous videos where I show how to apply these photo strips to the edge and I've done a video on how to create your own pattern if you choose to but the strip is applied just to the edge right here and I put double-sided tape at the top and at the bottom and then I glue the strip on it and you may have seen a lot of these online this is a pretty sunflower with the bee on it right there Okay, but I thought I'd do something a little different. I thought, well, there's this whole area up here that has nothing on it. So I'm gonna add a design on top of the book as well. And I printed out my image using the same process. Um, and I have a link right at the top and at the end of this video on how to create your own pattern. But I printed it to the height here and the height of my pattern is what would fit up here okay and that's what i'm folding i'm cutting right along this edge and it's going to go right into here okay and i'm going to cut right there so the book itself these i put the line at the top and at the bottom just to help with the guide and this is the first page which looks just a bunch of white lines and then it kind of starts into this but i wanted to if you're new to my channel or new to seeing this video i just wanted to show you how i do the page the strips how i prep them and what i do for that is i use a cutter pillar to create to cut out the strips i find this helpful because i it has a little light strip to it so it helps with seeing through a page when i'm cutting it like this i can line up the top and the bottom see if the light is off right there so if i turn it on i can see that i have a straight line for cutting this so i'll cut the top and the bottom real quick just on this page i want to show you a couple of strips i won't do the whole book obviously watching I'm going to trim this off slightly so that it's I'm not working with such a big page. And then what I like to do with my um, strips before I cut them all into strips. And this is the cool thing with the cutter, cutter pillar. You can cut super thin strips if you need to. I mean, look at this. That's how thin if you're kind of off, you can cut by, by that much. But uh, let me turn this off. And then what I do is I like to score my strips. And I use this score pal. It does come in a smaller size. But if you're doing the full size book, then you do need a bigger. Oh, that came out of there. You do need a bigger scoreboard. So I like this. And then once I trim that off, I flip it over. And I do the score lines on the quarter mark. So on the quarter and three quarters, because if you think about it, these strips here are half inches in terms of width. So if the first strip is half inches, I want to score right down the middle, which is a quarter of an inch. And I do want to hold this in place. Now it kind of raised up at the top here, but I want it. I don't want to push it because then it'll shift. So once you're done the first one, do not move the the page so i did the quarter inch and now the next strip is actually going to be between the half inch and the one inch so i'm scoring down the three quarter inch mark and then quarter three quarters so you kind of just do the whole page that way do the whole thing and then as you can see this right here it folded down the middle of the strip the score line not sure if you can quite tell um, if you don't have this you know you certainly don't need one of these score pals to mark your pages you can 
take the strip so let's say if i let me cut it down here where it's not scored so what i would do is if i'm scoring the if i have this strip and it's not scored what i would just do is by hand you're going to fold this in half like this so you don't need to use that score pal it's helpful because i think it's just easier to go right down where the score line is and then once i have it folded then i do like to go over it with a bone folder or scoring tool to make sure that this strip is nice and flat down okay so I would cut all of these and then I do leave the numbers on until I'm ready to apply it to the book otherwise it's easy to mix them up then once I cut the strip so this is strip number one I'm going to trim um, and actually because this is all white it's gonna be a little harder to gauge because I have my uh, let me explain here what I'm doing my image is not right against the bottom line as you can tell I have oops, move into camera view here so my row is not right against or the image is not right against the bottom border here so I do have this little gap which means I have to cut it but on a strip that's all white I don't know exactly where this is going to be same thing on the bottom I have a strip that needs to be cut approximately based on this I would cut it here and then here for the bottom line but hard to tell on a white strip so what I'll end up doing is I'll hold this here next to another strip that's has the marking so I know exactly where to cut it which would be right here And then same thing at the bottom i will cut it right here now if i had this row right against the image and then this row against the image then i'd know exactly where to cut it even on a white strip but i guess i wasn't thinking of that so i have to improvise this obviously doesn't matter matter which side is up and which is down since it's all white but eventually it will matter which is top and which is bottom and applying the strip now to it um once the pages you've done the front this is going to be a little trickier because these pages are all folded so let me hold that open this way and i like to use double-sided tape like this that has the paper on one side and the double-sided tape on the other and the reason i like to use that because then i can apply this strip to uh, probably five or eight pages so i don't want to apply this right on the to the corner because it, then these will overlap so each corner is going to end up having an extra set of papers at the corner so it'll kind of bulk up the corner which means that i'm going to apply this at the point where this strip ends which is right there so i'll take my paper press it against the page to make sure that it's totally butting up against the page and fold over okay so i'm just going to apply like this all the pages so that means i've got the strip here from the front of the book and then i'll apply a top strip here now for this I'm not using, I have a book folding stand that I use usually when I do the front of the page. I don't use it in this one because I think it makes it a little harder kind of because of the arm of the stand in the way. So I'm just going to use something else to kind of hold it in place as I'm applying these. So I'll apply about 20 pages and then come back and show you what it looks thus far. Okay, I've started to add the strips to the top and this is what it looks like so far. As you can see it kind of bulks up the book in this direction because these are kind of squeezed together this is a little more open but once I have the rest of the pages in I think it's gonna look awesome this little part here I didn't want to overlap and I believe I mentioned that before I'm filming this in segments so 
some of it I forget what part of it I've mentioned, but um, I didn't overlap right here. So if you look at the side of it, it's butting up right against the edge here. And as I'm using this pattern here, in hindsight, I've cut this, I should have put, you can see right there. So I did the row of numbers here. I should have put it right against the pattern. I didn't want to have to print this again. And what I did was I'm just measuring to make sure that I always cut off the same amount at the bottom. And I'm kind of cutting all the pages at once for the bottom. And then at the top, I need, I do need to measure. So as I get to this, I'm going to save one strip here to make sure that I'm cutting the same amount off on the pages here, because as you can see, there's going to be more white. So I'm not going to cut straight all the way down here. And I'm just going to continue with the rest of the pages. I just wanted to pop in and show you, and I'm doing the, the double sided tape at the, the two, the top and the bottom. And that's it. Not in between or on the back. So I'll finish this up and then show you what it looks like. So the front is completely done and I finished the top part of it. And there is the gnome. So it kind of tied it in with the honeybees here, as you can see, and the flowers. Now it did leave this little quarter of an inch um, area that's not covered because the strip com comes from here. And then this I ended because I didn't want to double it up right on the corner. So for that I've cut out some tiny little flowers like this. I used a little punch cutter and I just cut out a whole bunch of little flowers in different shades of yellow. And I'm going to use one of these shaping tools and I'm, I will just take the flower and in the palm of my hand kind of run this along, you know, ball it up in a sense. So that way it's not flat it has a little shape to it this way. So I'm going to do that with all these flowers and I'll glue them right at the edge here. And that will cover up this little rim that you see right there. And I will alternate the different colors, the different shades, and then just do this all along the edge. And then also do the same thing right up here, which left a little gap. It's hard to get this strip all the way into the spine because this is much tighter. So that's why I have to kind of cut it a little short to give this gap. But this can certainly be covered up with flowers, whether it's this or other types of flowers. I decided not to do very big flowers because I didn't want it to distract from the two photo images. That's why I'm using these tiny flowers, almost just like a little border. And the ribbon that I have here, so let me move these off and then I'll show you once I have it done. But I tied it up here with the ribbon. You can put it down here, you can move it off to the edge, but it's just the, it helps keep the book in shape. Now you can also add, if you don't want the ribbon, along the edge, but I think it kind of has a nice finish to it right that way. You can add cardstock at the bottom and glue this here so that it forces it in one shape, you know, at, at this opening, at this aperture. But I think the ribbon will help, especially since these strips will kind of try and push the book out this way. So I'll finish up these flowers, glue them along here, and then I'll show you the finished product. And to glue the flowers, I am using Art Glitter Glue. I like this glue because it's super strong and easy to work with. And it dries pretty fast. I added all the flowers up here and then to cover that little gap right up at the top. And I used this new uh, pearl kind of drops that I put right on the edge with at the in the center of each flower and there's the finished project so it's kind of fun to have the design at the top as well as at the bottom and tie the two images in so I've got the big B almost like a zooming in of something that you see up here on the gnome 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please comment below. Would love to see your project in my Facebook group. Feel free to join and post it there. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next project.